Zone 3 podcast. Super excited to have Dave Scott, CEO of Hyperfine with us, talking about some of their impressive technology and why we should be super excited about what they're bringing to the table. It's a complete game changer. You know, you're definitely changing the mode for our environment, right? Just the way we think about MRI, MRI safety, MRI portable, right? <laughs> That's like a new term for us. So, yo, tell us a little bit about yourself, about the company, and, you know, where things are headed. Thanks, Reggie. Awesome, awesome to be on the show. Super happy to be here. Thank Super you. happy to be at, at RSNA with Hyperfine. Uh, this is really our kind of our big coming out. Um, you know, last year we got FDA clearance, but in the middle of COVID, you know, oh, all right. the shows were shut down. So this was our chance to really be here and show the world what we've done. Nice. Um, nice. Now, there's, there's a lot of special things about Hyperfine, right? It's a very low field magnet, right? Yeah. And it's a permanent magnet. You want to kind of get into a little bit of the details there? Just yeah, kind of the yeah. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's really a different technology than traditional MRI. I mean, in the same way that um, let's take cars as an example, right? Going right. from a gas engine to an electric vehicle, mm -hmm. it's, it really takes a rethinking of all of the engineering and all the physics, and that's what, we, that's what we did. We started with a blank piece of paper, and we said, what would it take to build an MRI machine that could roll through a doorway on wheels, wow. plug into a normal wall outlet, and, and do a high, uh, a, a high quality image of the brain. How much energy does that take? Is, is, is it kind of like a microwave? It plugs or? into a normal wall, wall outlet, outlet, normal oh. 15 amp wall outlet, so it takes about the power of like a coffee maker. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> a coffee maker. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Nice. And so with RSNA this year, after FDA approval, where do you see things kind of going? Yeah. Right? We are super excited at this show. We're launching our new software. We just got FDA approval for our machine learning software. Oh, nice. So that's dramatically improving our image quality. So we're super excited by that. Um, and so our applications are really filling this unmet need um, in, it, at the patient bedside. So rather than having to take a complex patient and transport them uh, to an MRI suite, right. which is dangerous for the patient, it's, it's consume, time consuming for the personnel and the staff, we can roll our system right up to the patient bedside, image their brain, and uh, diagnose all kinds of different pathologies in the brain. Oh man, and I can only imagine just how, uh, like how that's gonna change workflows for the better, not just for, you know, technologists or for the ICU nurses, but for the patient. Yeah. You know, all the stakeholders, exciting. all the stakeholders benefit. You know, a lot of times you introduce a new technology and um, some, it, it's good for some stakeholders, but it's not good for all stakeholders. If we look at our, our situation, it's good for the patients. Right. They're, they're not having to be transported. It's safer for them. They get a faster diagnosis. Right. It's good for the physicians because they're not having to wait those many, many hours that it would take to normally get a diagnosis. Exactly. The nursing staff love oh, love this. I know they love it. <laughs> because they don't have to do all that packing up of a complex patient and transport them. Right. And then the hospital administration, we're seeing value on the ROI. So right. the return of... of um, the investment and really putting money back in the pocket of the hospital. We have data that shows that these hospitals are saving money in length of stay costs, right. uh, transport risk cost, and they're driving increased revenue and increased utilization of their existing MRI suite. Because if you can image a patient at the bedside, mm -hmm. and these are complex patients, instead of imaging them in the MRI suite where they're gonna take up two or three time slots, right. now we're freeing up those time slots, it's driving utilization to the existing MRI suite, which the hospital administrators love. Wow. Now, for people out there who want to kind of see how this thing can kind of be implemented in their workflow, do you guys have a way of doing demonstrations or kind of? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Great question. I mean, it's it's so portable. We put this thing in the back of a van. <laughs> that uh, is kind of crazy. We've got, it, we've got these vans oh equipped gosh. and we can drive them around the country. Wow. We can drive them up to a hospital, up to a clinic, clinic run a, a live demo in the van. We can roll the thing out of the van, roll it into a, a room, into a hospital room, into an ICU, wow. into an emergency room, and, and show a live demo in a real setting uh, with um, you know, a portable, really man. real life uh, environment. Right, that is truly portable MRI. It's something that I'm still having trouble, you know, Understanding. Your head yeah, around. it's just yeah. so mind blowing. Well, it's exciting. Well, the, the first people, first question people ask is about safety. Right. But the, because the the field is so low, it's 64 millitesla, so 0.06 oh. Oh. for wow. Tesla compared to say a 1.5 or three Tesla scanner. Right. So the you know the magnetic strength is 
it feels like a refrigerator magnet. Right. So you don't have the projectile risk. You don't have to concern over you know emptying your pockets of metal and things like that. Right. Uh, this can be in a room filled with all kinds of electronic equipment, and it, it it's not a problem. Not so a there's problem. really no uh, there's no safety risk from from that perspective. Um, yeah, it's 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 super exciting. I mean, portable MRI is inevitable. It's like going from an IBM mainframe right. to a laptop computer. You know this this progression of oh, technology. Wow. You know, well from said. very large and complex to smaller and smaller. It's it's happening, and this is inevitable. Right. We're not replacing traditional MRI because there's still a, a, a great use cases for that, but. When you need a bedside immediate answer uh, to a brain pathology or a brain concern, right. brain condition, roll up a, a hyperfine bedside MRI and we can get that scan done. Man, I'm sure you can't even talk about this, but I'm sure you guys have talked about maybe putting this into ambulances and things like that for traumatic brain injuries. We, we are. We are looking at that. We actually have a lot of groups that are approaching us for wow. putting this in, in in the back of an ambulance right. and ma making that ambulance like a, a, a stroke ambulance exactly. to focus on stroke. Um, but lots of interesting applications like that. Looking at, uh, we're getting approached by folks that want to put these in retirement communities and retirement centers. Oh, yeah. That's a big problem. That's a big you have a you have an elderly person that falls, and you know you don't know if you know you don't know what happened. Did they have a stroke? Did they just fall and hit their head? Right. You have to send that person to go get a scan done, right. um, and by ambulance. Right. Ninety percent of the time, it's no problem found. Right. So that's a huge cost to the healthcare system. What if you could have an MRI scanner at that retirement community or on a van that you could go and deploy at that retirement community, get that scan done, make Boom. sure that, that resident is okay, and, uh, and let them rest easy. Man, super exciting. Man, I, you, you guys have stole the show. From what we've seen, you know, Hyperfine is definitely the booth to go to. If you guys haven't gone there yet, make sure you go check it out. You guys are here all week, right? We're here all week, yeah. Well, it's, thank you uh, again, Dave Scott. Thank you, Reggie. Reggie's on three podcast. Hyperfire CEO, Dave Scott. Man, we are out. Thank you. things off and I know and it was Denise Denise, <laughs> Denise I am a right tech here and Denise I'm gonna give you the mic oh great yeah, thank so you just what I needed <laughs> and I'm so used to taking everything out of my pocket before I do this but I don't have to but let me take my earrings out you can just put them right here for God so we already went through the questionnaire with him to make sure that he is completely safe for us to scan. We are still following all of our MRI safety rules. Um, this is our five gauss line, so when you know about the difference of MRI, we want to make sure all the metal and everything that possibly could harm a patient, like as a pacemaker or if they go into the metal, we want to still follow that and make sure that he's safe. We noticed that his earrings were magnetic, so right. we're taking that out. But the rest of the stuff, he's got stuff in his oh, pocket. Got he's got a here. belt on. I don't want to do it, but hey, I'm taking their word for it. Right? That's right. We're going to be okay. Let me put in the front pocket. All right, well, have a seat up here. Now, be careful. One second, I'm just going to turn this down. See where this coil is? Oh, yeah. I want to. Yeah. Since he's a very mobile patient for me, um, go ahead and slide all the way in. What you want to do is put yourself all the way into the coil as if you're putting on a bike helmet. Keep going all the way until you're done. Oh, okay. Nice. Now, the biggest thing is to hold nice and still. Now, do you feel like you can hold still for me, or would you like to, little pads on the side of your ears? Uh, let's try some little pads. All right. I, really I think he wants to fall asleep. All right. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna put this in right next to you. You can go ahead and move them if you'd like. Oh, perfect. Okay, now I'm also gonna give you this little ball. You can blow up those pads, make oh. it real nice and tight for you. Oh, nice. Okay, can you scooch in a little bit more? Perfect. And are you comfortable with your legs, or do you want to oh, bend we up? A, like, we can do a cushion if you have one, yeah. Uh, we don't have a cushion, but you can bend up your knees. Oh, <laughs> nice. awesome. Fantastic. Okay, is that good? Yeah, that's perfect. All right, well, you just hold nice and still. We're going to go ahead and get started. So I just, um, we have it all programmed in here. We're going to go ahead and do a scan. And all right. So you're going to start hearing some knocking noises, okay? Right. So what we're doing is a little bit of calibration here just to make sure um, that we are set to scan and for our image quality. 
So if you know anything about MRI, we have a, an RF cage, which is, looks like a honeycomb. We're able to open it up on the, over onto the left side there. So that we, when we do have patients that have any um, intubation tubes or anything, we can help ease, get them in there a little bit easier, make sure that they're in the coil all the way. Our, our, our head coil is an eight channel head coil. We also have one transmitter coil along with seven noise cancellation boxes that that's really helps us be able to scan um, in this open environment. So it's, it's a real easy setup here for the, you type in the patient's name, it's kind of like an iTunes playlist. Um, when we go into the exam, we have all the protocols that are all set to go. And so someone who's scanning it, you can go right into whether, you know, that's a stroke protocol or if it's a headache, you just pretty much press that. If you want to add extra sequences, you can go ahead and say you want a flare, you want a diffusion, and then you're able to, to move these arrows down and replace them. So if you're having a patient that has a stroke, you're going to want to do the diffusion right away. Um, like I said, it's as easy as an iTunes playlist. You can remove them that just like that. The great thing about our scanner also is we have what we call image rendering. This first of all is going to be our localizer. So this is showing us that the green halo represents the coil that he's in. We wanna make sure he's positioned deep enough into the coil and that we're not gonna clip out any of the great anatomy. When I go into the next scan, you'll see it's starting to be real blurry. We call this image rendering and it's gonna keep building on the image quality. So really in, a, in just the two minutes that we've been scanning already, you can see um, a lot of the anatomy and if there's something major going on, you might even wanna stop the scan and take them right into surgery. So in the meantime, we're still building on this scan. We have two minutes left on this T2 axial. And from there, then we have about two minutes after the fact to really improve on the quality. So we'll come back to that when that's finished. <clears throat> so we have, um, you know, this is really a, a point of care portable MRI. And we're able to drive this right into the ICUs and into the emergency departments. And over here, if we see, we have a couple different um, stations that we can turn this into. So we have a drive mode right here where we use a joystick and we can maneuver around um, you know, the hospital rooms um, to make sure that we can get to the top of the, the patient's bed. We can go in any standard size elevator. We don't need any um, special um, service elevator. We plug into a regular outlet. Um, so we a 110 outlet, we don't need anything extra for that. Uh, all the electronics are housed down below, so it's a pretty much a modular unit. I was expecting. There's like almost no noise. Just about. I had the cushions up against yeah. my ears. Right. I'm already a big fan. You want to see your brain? Yeah. Oh, nice. Good. Okay. All right. So yeah. So here's your T2 scan. And so we we had it on camera before, but we were bringing up the image quality. So this is finally completed. What we can do then is go into our 3D scan. And if you take two fingers, I will actually let you if you want to. Oh, yeah. You can go through. You have model hands, though. I don't know. <laughs> Good thing I hit my nails on <laughs> But go ahead. Yeah, so you just take a two, two fingers. fingers. You just go. So if you try one finger, oh, it rotates. And if you do three, you kind of move it around. Oh, I love this. <laughs> I am a total techie. So this type of stuff is so up my alley because this is where everything's headed. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Oh, I like that. And this is a low fill, right? Mike, oh. here you go. Here's, here's my tissue. All right, Denise. 
MRI Tech. Yeah, for 35 years already. 35 years. So tell us how special this thing has been for you. Like how, how has this kind of changed your workflow or how you kind of imagine the field, right? Right. I mean, <laughs> you know, being an MRI tech for so long and then to see that this this scanner is on wheels and you can take it right to the patient. Right. You know, just like what Jess was just talking about, they want to keep the patients in ICU with them, with all the nurses and stuff. Right. You know, I don't want the IC those patients coming to me because right. they're always going to code on me. Now that we can take the scanner right to them and have the nurses help, like now it's a win-win situation because right. now we're a team effort and the nurses and the MRI people are working together right. for the one goal in this of mine is to make this patient comfortable and to scan that patient. Get that, get that information that the docs I need guess. to move forward, right? Because yes. sometimes when a patient is critical, you don't want to take them off the floor, right? No. And that yeah. can delay getting that MRI, right? So. Well, and just don't even think about this. Like when, when I have an ICU patient coming down to my MRI table, I have to block off now three oh, of my patients. Right. You know, so so now we're that's true. Yep. Now they can oh. take it up there. My schedule is really still great. Open, still. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much, Denise. Yeah. It's been great, man. We love this suite. We might even actually spend a night here tonight. What do right you think, here. Robert? <laughs> All right, just have my brain scan and I'm feeling real good about that. You know, kind of waking it up. But I am here with Jess. And really, Jess, I just have a few questions, right? Sure. Like you're an ICU nurse, right? Newer yeah. ICU. I am. So you know the difficulties of taking someone who's in critical care down to MRI, right? Yes. Like what are the biggest differences that you kind of noticed that Hyperfine has kind of provided you, you know? Yeah, so you, you have to imagine a patient in a neuro ICU. They're extremely complicated, critically ill patients that have multiple lines. Um, and when I say lines, I mean IV lines, multiple medications hanging, right. uh, patients on our, are on ventilators. So we have to pack all of that stuff up, put it onto the patient's bed. We have multiple nurses, respiratory therapy that has to come with us on our road trip oh, from yeah. the seventh floor all the way down to the basement Period in order, exactly, right? yeah. in order to get an MRI. So what we really are concerned about are those patients that become unstable on the way down to get an MRI. Right. When we get in the elevator and they, they start to go downhill very quickly or their, their blood pressure drops very suddenly. Um, so where this is really fantastic is it, especially in those subset of patients, those ones that you are unable to move, this is able to come right point of care to the bedside. We roll it in with our joystick right to the head of the bed, right. fold down the bridge, and we're able to slide a patient right in. Right in, on their bed, like literally just right in. Exactly. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Oh, I can only imagine because you, you don't have to worry about switching over to an MRI safe pump. You don't have to worry about, you know, switching over your telemetry monitors and Absolutely. going through that whole spill that literally sometimes takes longer than actually scanning the patient. Right. What, right. The other thing that's really fantastic is families can stick around too. So when patients, when, when families and loved ones are there oh. and somebody's super sick, they don't like to leave their side. That's so true. it's really nice, especially in the that's pediatric setting, a deal. mom can hold the patient's hand, make sure they're comfortable, all of those different things. Right. No, that's awesome. That's yeah. really good. I can only imagine, you know, how helpful this is going to be in the ICU for sure. Absolutely. You know, thank you, Jess, yeah, for, thank sure, you. for your time. Man. Sure, thank you. Man, this is Zone 3 Podcast. We are in the Hyperfine Suite. Their exhibit is amazing, and yeah, you've seen it here. That's my brain. Portable.